I ran a design competition in a local high school themed around Olympic standard dirty river water. In this video, I'm going to share the students' entries and I need your help to decide a winner. Before we start, maybe with the magnifying glass, you can just see this. This year, I'm participating in Movember, a charity event where you grow a moustache for November. If you've got a few dollars spare, please click the link down in the description to go to my page and make a donation. Back to this video and you, the viewer, will be helping me decide who gets this cash prize. But first, this story begins on printables. You might have noticed in my videos that when I screen cut printables, my points are constantly accumulating. I've got a lot of models that I've shared on printables, and there's a few that are constantly earning me more points. I think most people would redeem these points to get some free filament, but I'm in the fortunate position where I have a filament sponsor in X3D. They have a range of fantastic filament and I'm very happy to be using it. So what to do with those points? Now in the rewards section you can actually get some other things like 3D printers. Earlier this year, when my Prusa meter surpassed 10,000, I redeemed it to get a brand new Prusa Mini Plus. If you're wondering how this works, after you click redeem, you're told that in a few days, you'll get a voucher for the shop locked to whatever object that you decided on. So when available, I headed to the shop and completed the order, having to pay the postage to Australia. I'm fortunate to already have plenty of 3D printers, so I only got this one to be the grand prize for a design competition. The school was willing, so now I had to formulate the challenge. Defining the aims for this design competition took me back to coming up with design projects when I was still a classroom teacher. Firstly, whatever theme you're designing around needs to be topical and interesting. Around this time, the Olympics and Paralympics were taking place in Paris, so I chose that as the theme, but more specifically, the Seine River and the concerns over water quality ahead of some swimming events. Next, for kids to not feel like they're wasting their time, the design problem needs to have real-world significance. So for this, I picked wasteful packaging, of which there's so much around. Whether it be soft plastic or foam that lines boxes, all this stuff can do is add to landfill. And when it comes to 3D printers, most of them have both. And not just a little bit either. So any less wasteful alternatives that the students can come up with will be welcome. Next, the design challenge should be open-ended. And by that, I mean the solution should come from the student rather than being dictated by me. Just because I cover primarily 3D printing doesn't mean students should be forced to design a 3D printed solution. Next, we need a low floor but a high ceiling. And what that should mean is that students can submit something simple, but there's also room for something much more sophisticated. Finally, I want them to use a mix of skills. So not only do they need to generate the design concept, I also want them to consider branding, graphic design, clear communication, and even some video production. With all of that in mind, here's what we ended up with. In our scenario, the French government is trying to recoup 1.4 billion euros that they spent cleaning up the Seine River for the Paris Olympics. So to fundraise, they've taken bottles of dirty river water and are selling it as official Olympic memorabilia. In this scenario, the vials of water are ready, as are the certificates of authenticity, but the French government has overlooked something crucial in the packaging. Boxes big enough for the certificate are too big for the vial and we don't want it to smash, so students have to design a solution. I put all of the details for the competition on a hidden page on my website, including the scenario, the design brief, and then technical specifications. The certificate is A5 sized, the vial matches a spice jar commonly found in supermarkets, and the box matches a common size found at Australia Post. To enter, students needed a single landscape A4 page pitching their design, a 60 second video explaining it and showing how it works, any instructions and files needed for me to recreate their solution, and a document with links for attribution for any media they've used. And on top of that, for child protection, it was essential that the students never showed their face or said anything more than their first name. To further guide them, four judging criteria were given. How viable their solution was, how creative it was, how well they communicated it, and how professional was their presentation. Rounding out the page was a section on prizes, tips for the competition, and step-by-step -step instructions on how to share their work. And by the way, I did build in an Easter egg for the students with that title. Flacon d'eau de caca. Which hopefully interested students discovered. We launched the competition at an assembly, and then I provided graphics for them to use on their social media and newsletters. Pretty simple, right? Stop this glass vial from smashing inside a box as it's posted internationally. 
but true success would require something that was cheap, eco-friendly, and had themed branding. First place, as judged by me and the teachers, is the brand new Prusa Mini Plus. But a People's Choice Award with a $100 cash prize is chosen solely by you, the viewer. There were only three entries, so let's get into them in random order. Our first entry is from Jono, and he's in year eight. This is my solution. I've put my logo at the front of the box. This uh, paper represents the certificate. Uh, this foam represents uh, mushroom packaging, which is made out of uh, corn, no, uh, mushroom roots and corn compost from farms. Uh, it can be crushed up and added to your garden to add nutrients. Uh, it is quite stable, as you can see. And this amount is only 50 cents. Uh, this podium is 3D printed. It is made out of uh, plastic bottles from the ocean. And if you grab the certificate, you can put it in the back, put that there, and add to cool design. For me, this entry ticks a lot of boxes. We have some branding in the form of a customized logo, and close attention has been paid to the technical specifications of the challenge. Probably my favorite thing is that this solution not only keeps the vial safe during transport, but acts as a display with a podium which is nicely themed to the Olympics. And the first is the podium that's already printed, and Jono provided an STL of this. He specifies that this is to be 3D printed using recycled PET bottles. Myself and a lot of other people have covered this process, so this is definitely feasible. Here, I just used regular PLA. This is an easy print, but I do have concerns over how much time and plastic is needed. The other half of the packaging is the foam. This one looks like a mock-up, but the real one is meant to be molded from mushroom packaging by Ecovative. And this is something I've never heard of before, but it sounds really good. If we browse the website, we can see that this packaging foam is made from the roots of mushrooms. It can be grown to a custom shape in seven days. It's meant to be a lot cheaper than foam packaging. It's flame and water resistant, and its shelf life is 30 years if kept in dry storage conditions. And once you're done, you break it up, chuck it in your garden or compost, and it should be gone in just 45 days. This is a product that I wish manufacturers across the world were using instead of foam. To help with this one, Jono provided another STL called Assembly. And if I split it apart, I can isolate the foam shape to make my own. For my mock-up, I just used regular packaging foam recycled from 3D printer boxes. I needed two sheets to get close to the required thickness, so I finished one and then traced the cuts onto the other. The hardest part, in making a mock-up at least, was the cutout in the middle for the vial, mainly because of this skinny backing piece that holds the vial off the bottom. Once I had cut all of my segments, I used some hot glue to hold everything in place as one piece. Let's say how hard it would be for Paris to pack. The podium goes in first, followed by the foam, and then the vial is a nice snug fit in the middle. The certificate of authenticity then sits on top of that before the box is sealed up. And at the other end, the person opens their package. The certificate is displayed first and foremost. They can remove the vial from the foam, put the foam in the garden, and then if they like, put the certificate behind the podium and then put the vial on display. Flacon d'eau de caca. Our next entry is from Angelique, who is in Year 9. Hello, this is my design for the Teaching Tech Design Competition 2024. My design is a tray made to fit securely in the box, modelled on an Australian Post small parcel box. The glass file fits in the tray as demonstrated. Additionally, the certificate of authenticity can be fastened with the four slits located at each corner of the inserted tray providing a secure and protected place preventing damage to both the glass vial and the certificate. Utilizing sturdy recycled cardboard to secure and hold the glass vial, ensuring safe transportation. The design features illustrate of well-known landmarks and cuisine associated with the Paris, including the current 2024 Paris Olympic Games logo. Each inserted tray is estimated at 80 cents to produce and can be manufactured in just five minutes using a laser machine. Made from recycled and biogradable materials. Everything was well explained in that video and the use of subtitles to support the audio is a great idea. But I will say the submission requirements specifically ask for landscape for both the information page and video 
So in future, please pay close attention to that so I can best showcase your work using all of the screen rather than just the center third. The information sheet does a great job supporting the video and highlighting the key features. This one does tick a lot of boxes because it can be made very quickly and cheaply using recycled materials. Angelique also provided a collage of her progress, which was really nice to see. My only concern here is it's not clear whether she drew all of the supporting graphics herself or got them from the internet. And again, another key requirement was to attribute any included media, so I'm not sure if this has been done. Angelique provided an Adobe Illustrator file so I could cut my own version of the packaging. However, there was a couple of hiccups here that I wouldn't say were her fault. The main one being that my older version of Illustrator didn't have the same font and this was butchered. So I had to get resourceful, finding a sample of the font online and zooming in the text to take a screenshot, which I could then paste into Illustrator and trace to get it vectorized ready for the laser cutter. I replicated the size and placement as best as I could using her video as a reference. I had some more hiccups when I imported the file into Lightburn. Again, not her fault. It's just a difference in how I have my laser set up compared to the one they have at school. I used some recycled cardboard and dialed in my laser to match the different layers. The job then went smoothly, taking my machine around half an hour. I think the five minute manufacturing time is quite realistic on an industrial machine tuned to suit. This cardboard I had on hand was a little thicker than intended, but I'm pretty sure the design still functions as it was meant to. Overall, I think this is an attractive design with nice visual flair. But overall, my favorite part is the functional aspect of this cut hinge in the middle. Once the folds are made the first time, it swivels down into position and I think it's a really elegant solution. The laser cut insert fits beautifully inside the box in terms of length and width. The glass file was a snug fit, which is good in terms of protection, but it does seem to sit up way too high for the box to actually close. In the manufacturing file, I measured the depth where the vial sits to be 20 millimeters, whereas the competition page clearly specifies the vial has a diameter of approximately 41 millimeters. Perhaps this was a radius versus diameter error. Or maybe I meant to tear the cardboard, but that's not clear looking at the files provided. I think you could fix this easily, and overall I still think it's a really elegant solution. Flacon d'eau de caca. The final design is from Eleanor, who is in year 7. The box contains a vial of water sourced directly from the River Seine, packaged in 100% recyclable and eco-friendly materials. This box is crafted from cardboard, coloured with light blue ooze and greens that symbolise the river's clarity. Inside, you will find a certificate of authenticity resting on paper shreds, which represent the ripples of the water while preventing the vial from shifting during transport. These shreds echo the marine colour palette of the box. The vial itself is wrapped in newspaper articles, detailing the cleanup efforts of the River Seine that occurred for the Olympics. As you read through these articles, you'll notice to shift in tone from certain failure to incredible success, illustrating the long journey of the river's restoration. Each article highlights the word Seine, with the highlight colour transitioning from green to blue as the articles gain more positivity. This thoughtfully designed package culminates your very own vial of authentic sand water, delivered to you in a safe and secure manner. That's a nice clear video and the instructions are nice and clear as well, although they're portrait. For me, this entry stands out because it's quite symbolic, encompassing the emotional journey of France overcoming a significant barrier. As part of her submission, Eleanor included a PDF with all of the news articles that she showed in her video and they're highlighted with colour coding which changes from green to blue as the articles become more positive. There was a supporting document that gave references for the news articles too and then a concise set of instructions explaining how to make it as shown in the video. So let's make it and obviously printing the 2D articles is a piece of cake and I also happen to have some blue A4 paper on hand that I put through this USB powered shredder. From here, it was just a matter of wrapping up the vial using the printed articles in the correct order. And while it's true that these materials are very cheap and recyclable, probably the weakness of this concept is the manual labor required to package each one, which will surely add up over time. With the bundled vial in the middle and the shredded paper either side, there's still room for the certificate of authenticity to sit on top. And I'd say in terms of actually securing the vial so it can't smash, this is probably the most effective design as it sits in the middle of the box and is supported from each side. The purchaser of the memorabilia then has the task of unwrapping each article and hopefully reading them. And I think there's a fair chance they would because anyone who's this invested in buying dirty river water is probably going to want the full experience. The final article is about the success of the cleanup project. 
and then we have our sample of river water to prove it. There is quite a lot of packaging left over afterwards, but it is easily recyclable by the user. Flacon d'eau de caca. By the time this video comes out, I would have met with the other teachers to discuss the grand prize. So how do you vote for the people's choice? In the description, there's a link to a voting form. From there, you can get to the full competition guidelines, but I've also put in the design brief and criteria. From there, it's just a matter of selecting your favorite and clicking submit. Prizes will be presented at assembly mid next week, so make sure you vote sooner rather than later. And also, look out for that Movember link down in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy safe transport of questionable river water. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.